We've just arrived in Chester. We don't really have a busy day planned today. We're just gonna walk around, take in the sights, maybe grab something to eat and have a nice relaxing time. We're going to get some food. This is it, it's a little cafe and apparently they're vegan and they do really tasty food there. So that's where we're heading. That's our first stop. I got the wild mushrooms on sourdough bread, a bowl of kimchi because I absolutely love kimchi and my mum got the acai bowl. I bet Chester is really beautiful around Halloween because it reminds me a little bit of York due to all the historic buildings. And also I know they do some ghost tours so it would be quite cool to come back here around the spooky season around October and take part in a few ghost tours because it does have a very autumnal vibe. This whole area seems to be very, very peaceful. So this makes a good calming day trip from Liverpool because Liverpool is such a buzzing city that's very, very lively and Chester has a much calmer vibe. Right now we're gonna go and explore the Chester Rows. They are basically a collection of shops that span across two levels and they have this wooden exterior that's very traditional English and they date back to the 13th century so they're very old very historic so the rows are quite cool but I'm just a little sad because they're not maintained as well as they should be they're definitely a little bit dirty a little bit run down but if you can get past that and you're interested in Chester's history it's definitely worth a visit worth having a look at the rows but keep in mind they are not maintained as well as they should be I actually do feel that other countries like Japan like Ukraine they do a much better job of looking after their historical landmarks than the UK does we are going to have a look at the Eastgate clock. It is a very famous landmark in Chester and also allegedly the second most photographed clock in England after the Big Ben. So it's behind me, let's go look at it. It's worth it for the experience. A lot of people seem to be really into the clock and to be honest, when I was up there, I got really into the clock. It's a nice day out. We are heading towards the River Dee and we have this quaint little path. Oh, this area is so pretty. This is the largest Roman amphitheatre in Britain and at the time of its glory it would have seated 7,000 people. A lot of things would have taken place here, everything from gladiator fights to public executions. So this place is quite powerful and it's quite an important landmark. Oh no, somebody left their little car. Oh no! is the 31st of August, which is my birthday. And I'm so excited because today we're going to a Japanese restaurant in Liverpool and it's really, really good. It's not a gimmick, it's not fusion cuisine, it is Japanese food. And I think it's one of the very few places in the UK that do truly authentic Japanese food. So today we're just going to have a quiet family meal and I'm really looking forward to that. I don't normally do big parties on my birthday. I love big parties and I love being surrounded by people and having fun. But when it comes to my birthday, I 
always want them to be close-knit and intimate and I think that stems to my childhood in Uzbekistan because we always used to have these big meals with our close family and friends whenever we would celebrate something so I always feel like my birthday is a very close-knit family affair. The thing that's making me kind of sad today though is that Angelina cannot be at the family meal because she's still in China and what we're gonna do today is FaceTime instead. She actually got me a present. So she ordered me a present from the UK to be delivered to my house before my birthday and John intercepted the package. Hello. That's John. That's him saying hello. So I'm going to open it with her today on FaceTime and then later in the video either today or tomorrow if I have enough time I will show you what John got me for my birthday and I'm so grateful and so happy. It's all tech upgrades for my current setup and they're all to do with sound quality and storage and that is exactly what I need. So let's go get some breakfast and then FaceTime with Angelina and then we will head into Liverpool city center. I'm opening the gift. There's no receipts in there or anything like that. <gasps> okay, oh, it's from Pandora. Thank you. Angelina's here. Do you want to say hi? Hello. Hello. Oh, it's it so is nice. pretty. Oh, good. Oh, it's shiny. It is shiny. So it's silver, and then at the front, there's a little diamante thing. So cute. Yeah. It's a good menu. Nice and big. John and I are gonna get two sharing plates for the starter. And then for the main, I think I might go for the yasai curry because I've been craving Japanese curry for a while now. Ooh. Thank you. Oh, it's really tasty. It's sweet. It's been such a long time. This is the first taste of Kieran outside of Japan. It's good. It's superior. It's the superior beer in my opinion. Yes, I do. That's ours again. <laughs> Thank you. So my mom got the Yasai croquettes. We got the Yasai gyoza and the horenso. We also got the Nasu Dengaku. Let's try the Yasai gyoza. It's got the Japanese flavor. This is the good stuff. Look at that Nasu. Is that saffron on top? I'm not sure what it is. Yeah. We have the yasai curry. I'm so excited to try this. You're having cheesecake? Yeah. Wait, which one? The Bailey's? John, that doesn't sound Japanese. <laughs> I'm supposed to share. What are you doing? Guys, that food was awesome. <laughs> it's kind of demonic <laughs> that with the Percy cupcake on top. Sorry, Larry, no cake for you. <laughs> Larry, no cake for you. Oh, it's so colorful. It's like a My Little Pony cake. It's the next day after my birthday and as promised, I will show you some of the things that John got me to upgrade my setup. I have been wanting to upgrade my equipment for a very long time, but over the last year, especially over the last year, it would have been impossible financially and it just seemed a bit risky because we didn't know what was happening with the lockdowns and with the jobs and everything else. It was a bit difficult and felt like a risk. Even though this is nowhere near top of the range equipment, in my opinion, this equipment is still very, very expensive, so I didn't mind waiting at all. So I'm gonna start with the most basic thing and also the most useful thing and that is storage for all my footage and my images and my documents and everything else. I have been storing all my footage from Japan and Ukraine and everywhere else across several memory cards and three hard drives. I've got two my passports and this Buffalo hard drive as well which I got in Japan and these three are completely full and I just have a feeling that this my passport for Mac the oldest one that I have is on its way out and that would be unthinkable to me to lose all this footage there is a lot of footage on here footage from when I first arrived in Japan and even before even before that even when I was still in the UK living in Leeds <laughs> so I was so happy when John got me another my passport for Mac a nice updated fresh version that stores 
five terabytes. This is basically the larger version of this one. This one's a little bit lighter, a bit thinner. This is a, a beefy, a beefy boy. So it's something I'm really happy about. And I'm gonna spend the next couple of weeks transferring the footage from this one onto this one and making sure that it is safe and backed up. The next thing is a bit more exciting and it's the Rode Video Mic Go, which actually isn't in the box because it's already on my camera. And this is definitely an upgrade because I have not been using an external camera microphone on my Canon EOS M50. I used to use one about a year ago. I used the Rode Video Micro, but unfortunately after traveling with this and having it out in many terrible weather conditions and having this overheat in the ridiculous humidity of Japanese summer, it has developed quirks which I can no longer work with. It makes random noises. It doesn't always connect properly. This did come with a dead cat, but even with the dead cat, it did not do the best job of reducing wind. If you watch my China video, you will probably hear how bad the sound quality is in some of those clips. One of the reasons it took me so long to release the China video is because I was incredibly apprehensive about the sound quality, which was pretty atrocious. And I use this for most of the video. For indoor recordings where my camera is stationary and I'm not moving it around and this is just sitting on top of my camera, it's actually okay. It's not bad. But if you take this outside, that's where you encounter problems. But this did last me for quite a long time. I've had it for several years. It was just time to upgrade. So next is the star of all the presents and it is the Rode NT1A Studio Condenser microphone. It's a pretty big, pretty heavy box. And I feel like this microphone is very well known. It has been out for a while. For my voiceovers up until now, I have been using the Blue Snowball. And the Blue Snowball is a USB microphone, meaning that I can take this cable, plug this side into the Blue Snowball and plug this side into my computer. And the sound will go straight into my computer as long as my input is set to the Blue Snowball. As the Rode NT1A is not a USB microphone, you can't actually just directly plug it into your computer. You will need some kind of an interface and it needs phantom power, something to power it. So to make this microphone work with your computer, you would need something like this. This is the Amtrak Solo M Audio Recording Interface. There are a multitude of audio interfaces out there. This one is definitely on the more affordable side. It's probably one of the most affordable interfaces out there. I already opened this yesterday because I needed to check that everything was fine and not broken. So I had a quick look at the microphone and the quality, the quality was nice. It was nice. I was impressed. It's a lot heavier than what I'm used to. But again, this is supposed to be a studio microphone. This would not be suitable for vlogging unless your vlogging format is sitting down in your home and not doing travel videos. I kind of do a mixture of both and I also do voiceover work. So this is perfect for me to have in a home studio. Rodemic. Rode mic. I, I just read that as Rodemic. I can't believe I just... So yeah, this is the microphone and it is heavy. It's a lot more sturdier than what I'm used to. So I'm quite happy with this. And this particular pack comes with a pop filter. The one thing that I've noticed about the reviews is that sometimes this microphone does exaggerate the B's and the P's a bit too much. So it has been recommended that you get a pop filter, but this pack already comes with a pop filter, which is great. I can't give you a review of this microphone because I haven't actually tried it. I am just telling you the general consensus at the moment. We have a very sturdy, very long XLR cable. I am super excited to use these things. This is the desk stand, by the way. I will set everything up and get back to you in a couple of minutes. This desk stand is heavy. You could like kill someone with this. So this is me setting everything up. The M-Track Solo is super easy to use. You can also plug in an instrument if you're recording music and you can always upgrade in the future if you want something that feels a bit more solid. The build quality is very sturdy and this includes the pop filter. The microphone and shock mount are both very heavy, so I am incredibly relieved that the stand I am using has a lot of weight at the base. But even now, I am still a tiny bit worried about the balance. In case you're wondering, this is what the blue snowball sounds like. There is no editing on either of these samples. This is the raw sound from the microphone, and as you can tell, there is quite a bit of a difference. I have just switched back to the Rode NT1A and I am going to have so much fun with this. I'm going to leave this video here. Thank you so much for watching. I hope you enjoyed it. If you did, don't forget to leave me a like and subscribe and I will talk to you next time.